previous video, we explored how the world's first Western film was made in Britain. But the British contribution to the genre doesn't end there. British-made Westerns are some of the most interesting, unique and important contributions to the genre, yet they have been so underappreciated, it's time to rediscover the lost empire of British Westerns. The great thing about the genre is that it transcends its immediate setting. The themes and ideas which identify a Western are universal in appeal, taken out of 19th century America and transported to historical settings around the world. One of the greatest westerns of all time, The Magnificent Seven, is famously a remake of the Japanese film Seven Samurai. In fact, the audience demand for westerns was often bigger outside the US than it was inside it. The Magnificent Seven, for example, made three times as much at the box office in Europe as it did in the US. 2.5 million cinema tickets were sold in the UK alone. A cover of the theme from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly spent longer as the British number one single in 1968 than Jimi Hendrix's All Along the Watchtower. Needless to say, Britain loved cowboys, and so it's no surprise that the film industry threw itself into the genre. As westerns became more popular to a European audience, it became cheaper to make them in Europe than in the real West. It's estimated that between 1961 and 1978, there were around 500 westerns made in Europe. Unfortunately, the British ones weren't very good. British Wild West films, what we call roast beef westerns, are generally regarded as being cheap, low-quality imitations. This is a fair assessment. Most of the directors were inexperienced, and the films themselves feel like lazy regurgitations of tired tropes. However, Quentin Tarantino did say that Hanny Calder was an inspiration for Kill Bill, so swings and roundabouts. Roast beef westerns were bad because they were just doing what everyone else did. British westerns really came into their own when they were doing something different. The two great traditions in British filmmaking are cashing in and taking the mick. Way before Blazing Saddles, British filmmakers were satirising the Western. At a time when the genre still took itself fairly seriously, believing itself to represent American culture and values, British filmmakers were ahead of the curve in making fun of it. The Sheriff of Fractured Jaw, released in 1958 and starring Jane Mansfield, follows the comic fish-out-of-water adventures of a British gunsmith trying to sell his weapons in the West. Because British filmmakers were outsiders looking in, they perhaps felt a lot better about making fun of it. Carry On Cowboy, released in 1965 as the 11th of the 31 Carry On films, is a ruthless satire of the main tropes of American westerns. The hallmarks of the Carry On troupe were their bordery humour, rooted in the British music hall and seaside traditions, and their willingness to make fun of almost everything. It's a shame that Blazing Saddles is often regarded as the first Western satire when Carry On Cowboy was doing it a full nine years beforehand. What I find really interesting is how British filmmakers made Westerns around the world, leaving behind the same whitewashed Mexican village or wooden cowboy town. By using their close ties with Commonwealth countries, these films are unique in their setting and topic, a refreshing alternative to the glut of copycat westerns. Let's start with Canada. The Trap, released in 1966, stars Oliver Reed as a trapper fighting against the wilderness in a proto The Revenant. A mute orphan girl is sold by her family to him as a wife to pay their debts and eventually falls in love with him, which is a bit dodgy, but that happened a lot back then. The film does a great job of channeling the rugged beauty of the Canadian frontier and the struggle for survival in a harsh environment. Now we're off to Australia. 
In World War II, the Australian government was concerned that their contribution to the war effort was going unappreciated by the rest of the Allies. They contacted the British Ministry of Information, who commissioned a film. The result was a 1946 film, The Overlanders, one of the very first bush ranger or meat pie westerns. Set in 1942 and based on a true story, it follows a group of ranchers as they transport their cattle 1,600 miles across the Australian outback to escape the threat of Japanese invasion. The huge popularity of the film in Australia prompted further films, thus birthing the subgenre of Australian and New Zealand westerns. Let's go to South Asia. A real hidden gem is the 1992 film Wild West about a group of young Asian men in London who start a country band. It's got great commentary on life as second-generation British Asians, and it's nice to see Western themes translated into a different cultural context. These are just some of the films which demonstrate the originality in British Western filmmaking around the world. But whilst these are very identifiably Western, what if there's other British films which have Western themes, but we don't consider them to be Western? Lawrence of Arabia is one of the greatest films ever made. Whilst it's usually described as a historical epic, I think there's a case to be made for it being, thematically, a Western. Hear me out. You have the vast desert expanse, an unforgiving wilderness. A man is sent into a strange land to bring order to a wild frontier. He must navigate the complexities of local tribal conflicts and rely on local guides to help him. He struggles with himself and his own moral ambiguities. The process of subduing the frontier is incredibly violent, and by the end only a thin veneer of civilization is imposed. These themes are central to the Western genre, especially the later revisionist Westerns, which added complexity and nuance to the settings and characters. But because Lawrence isn't wearing a cowboy hat or working with Native American tribes, we don't consider it to be a Western. Okay, so you're probably not convinced that Lawrence of Arabia is a Western, and that's fine. I'm doing this to challenge the way we categorise films. If we look at a film through the lens of a different genre, we can get a new appreciation for it. This got me thinking. What other British films are out there which have Western themes, but because of their settings, we don't consider to be Western? One example is Northwest Frontier, released in 1959. Set in India in 1905, a British captain escorts a young prince to Delhi on a train whilst evading capture by local rebels. Change the setting to the Wild West and you basically have John Ford's classic 1939 Western stagecoach. This film is particularly interesting because, released just 11 years after the partition of India, it grapples deeply with the legacy of British colonialism and offers far more depth than your typical 1960s action film. Similarly, the 1967 film The Long Duel stars Yul Brynner as an Indian who leads his tribe in revolt against the British after being unjustly imprisoned. Replace India with the American frontier and the British with US soldiers and you have a classic revisionist western about native peoples resisting oppression. Once you start looking for these elements, you begin to see them everywhere. Just because a film doesn't conform to the normative standards of the genre, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have Western themes. And by broadening our understanding of the genre, we can get a better insight into and appreciation for a variety of films. I've spent most of this video talking about films which are quite old, so what about all the modern stuff? Well, the genre is still immensely popular in all its spin-offs and iterations, but modern westerns tend to be largely American. So where have all the modern British westerns gone? Well, fortunately, there are a few worth checking out. 
God's Own Country from 2017 is basically the British Brokeback Mountain set in the rolling Yorkshire Dales and although I wasn't a huge fan of it, I can see why others would enjoy it. The 2022 miniseries The English is one of the finest British westerns ever produced. An English woman travels to the American frontier to avenge her dead son and in the process befriends a Pawnee scout. Beautifully shot, beautifully performed and incredibly moving, it's an exceptional character piece which is definitely worth your time. But Slow West from 2015 is, in my opinion, the best British western, following a young Scot as he travels through the West in search of his long-lost love. The cinematography is gorgeous, the scenery is stunning, visually it's a feast for the eyes. As a revisionist western, it re-evaluates the people and landscape it's depicting whilst still retaining an authentic historical feel. It's a hugely enjoyable original modern period piece and I'd highly recommend checking it out. In the first video, we learnt about how Britain made the world's first western film. And in this video, we've seen how, at a time when most people were making cheap copycat films, British filmmakers were among those determined to do something different by subverting the genre or transporting it into a different setting. The Western genre has universal appeal because it has universal themes. Revenge, the wild frontier, the lone person on a mission. So let's use these elements to craft brilliant films of our own, adding in our own distinct flavour. Let's bring back the roast beef western, but this time, let's make it well done. <laughs>